Go away. <laughs> Get back. Go. Get <laughs> Hi everybody, Ziv Simon. I'm here with Dr. Stanley Malamud. Hi Ziv. Professor of anesthesia, now retired from USC. Thank God. And we, thank God, great school. And great, great school, but 40 years of teaching was almost a life sentence. Okay, life sentence, uh, you know, it's all relative. It's relative. So um, we have only a couple of minutes to ask uh, Dr. Malamud a couple of questions. Um, the first question that I wanted to ask you, what is the most common complication or problem that dentists have with local anesthesia okay. in your experience? Well, the most common problem by far is they miss. Mm -hmm. And the misses occur almost exclusively in the mandible. Okay. And usually when, when somebody is giving the inferior alveolar nerve block or mandibular block. And um, one of the, I mean, if you want to talk about tips or things you can do to improve that, is number one on that mandibular block injection, higher is better. Okay. The most common reason we miss is simply being too low where the nerve is already entered into bone. So number one, go higher if you miss the first okay. time. Number two is learn alternative techniques. We have the Gal Gates, the Akinosi Bazarani, the PDL, intraosseous. Articane is a great local anesthetic when used by mandibular infiltration. It works nicely. And then now we have buffered local anesthetics. So okay. any of those combinations are going to improve your success rate. So there's no such thing as a patient that is resistant, resistant to anesthesia? No. There's no such thing? I, I, well, unless that they have a really severe infection. Okay. But uh, other than that, you can get a patient numb with some one technique or some combination. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, okay great. Um, do needles really break? Yes. Does that happen and how often does well, that happen? Well, this morning I got an email from an attorney okay. saying that, uh, that she's, she is defending a dentist who had a needle break. Uh, actually, the term they use is the needle separated. Separated, of, of course. They never break. Utter they only separate. Nonsense because the, impl the answer is yes, they do. Uh, how commonly? Very rarely. Uh, I would say, and the reason they're so rare is that I get involved in the cases that if they were more common, you would, you would hear, you know, they would be commonplace. But I would say to you, in this case, okay, the broken needle, the, the separated needle, mm. there's, when you say a needle separates, you're thinking that there's two pieces of metal that are joined together in that thing called the hub. It would separate. Not true, there's one long piece of metal in there. Okay. The needle broke. And I would have to say that invariably it's because the doctor is using a 30 gauge short needle and on a technique where you shouldn't be using a short needle, which is anytime you're going down, you know, you're going in more than 20, millimeter, 20 millimeters, you want to use a long needle. Because if a needle breaks, it'll always break at the hub. And if you're down all the way to the hub, the needle's gone and you're going to have a lawsuit. So you, you have to visualize the needle at all time. You don't want to have it you don't disappear want, in the tissue. You don't want to have, you don't want to hub it. Hubbing would be all the way. Hubbing up. meaning all the way. Yeah, up. Okay. and a long needle is 32 millimeters long, and on, on adult patients, you're not going to hub it. You're okay. not, and it's as simple as that. Okay, that's that's good to know. Uh, so, what are you going to do now after retiring from USC? What's the uh, what's the oh, plan? I'm, the big plan. The big plan is I'm traveling. I've, I've, I've always traveled when I uh, when I was giving lectures outside the university, but I, I used to have to stay in school to the end of the day, catch the last flight out, okay. and then hurry up to get back to school. But now I'm going places, I'm going a day early, staying a day after, and I'm enjoying it more. Okay. So I'm busy as ever, but I love it. Sounds like a plan. One last question. Yes. You're going to give a lecture now for the Nate Sturt seminar. Yes. I'm going to be lecturing after you. So give me some tips because I'm the underdog. I'm lecturing after a prominent speaker. What, what should I do to, uh, uh, to do uh, well <laughs> in, my, in my lecture? Keep him away. Keep my way. Late afternoon, late afternoon. Coffee. You're on from what, 3.30 to 5.30? 3.30 uh, to 5. Yeah, I'll tell you something, that's rough. I know, that's why they put me there. I'm a morning person. Okay, I'm good in the morning, I fall asleep in the afternoon. But and judging by the age of some of these alta I'm Yeah, gonna, of course. You know, we, we have a, a real chore ahead of us. Good, <laughs> I'll, I'll use some elbows. There uh, you go. Dr. Malaman, thank you for your time. I appreciate it's, the, it's the time pleasure. you gave us and uh, we'll see you soon. And you gotta love the Apple iPhone. Yeah, we love it. That's great. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Ha <laughs> ha!